Hi there everybody, welcome back to Economics A-Level on YouTube. In this video we're going to look at what resources are, building on our previous video, and then we're going to have a look at what free goods and economic goods are, which is all related as well. Okay, so last time we looked at what economics was and what it wasn't. We looked at the basic economic problem and the problem of scarcity. So if you want to go back and refresh your memory of what that is, or if you've forgotten what it is, please click the link now, and that will take you back to that video. Otherwise, we're going to move on. And what we're going to hopefully get out of this video is an understanding of what resources are. In particular, we're going to have a look at what factors of production are, and the difference between renewable and non-renewable resources. And then we're going to have a look at free goods and economic goods, which will build... Uh, knowledge for the video that will follow this one. So let's start with what resources are. Economists say that resources are things that we put into a production process in order to use to produce goods and services that we want as humans. So basically we're calling them factor inputs and we use these you know to put into machinery or whatever to create products for ourselves and services that meets our wants and needs. So that's what a resource is. But in economics, we call these factors of production because there are four of them that are used during the production process. And you probably have come across them in your life, but you've just never thought about them in this way. So the first factor of production we're going to look at is called land. The second we're going to look at is called labor, which is humans. And then we're going to have a look at capital, which does not mean money, but we'll come back to that in a second. And we're then going to have a look at enterprise or entrepreneurship. And as you can see, there's an aeroplane there. That is an example of what we would call capital in economics, because it's a machine that transports people about. You have labour working on that machine, but the actual aeroplane itself would be an example of capital. OK, so let's talk through land then. So land is an interesting concept because it's obviously like a physical space, like a field, for example, which is what most people would think land is. But it's also things that grow on or inside the land or, for example, inside the sea. So land in economics counts not just as physical space, but things like fish and oil, apples, pears, things like wheat coal, copper, all of those are what we count as land. And we can call this in economics a raw material, something that is a primary product used in order to create other products or used in its own right, for example, in the case of food, like things like apples and gold. Although, of course, you can use them to create other things as well, but primarily used in their own right. Um, we also talk about rewards to factors of production. So land has its own reward and you get a reward from land if you're the owner of land by either renting that land out to somebody or by leasing that land to somebody. So that's what land is in economics. Labour is the work that humans put in and the amount of humans that there are, and the productivity of those humans, i.e. their capital. So labour, as an input into the production process, is going to be using the primary products, or the things that come from the land, and using them in order to create other products, obviously, or well not obviously, but in combination with capital. And the reward for human activity in the production process is and you're probably all aware of this, wages and salaries and other earnings. It could be things like benefits in kind, things like bonuses and stuff like that, but the primary reward for human labour are wages and salary. So now we need to have a look at capital. So it's very important that you do not think of capital as, econ uh, as money in economics. I said in video one that lots of people come to economics lessons thinking capital means money and we're going to be learning about finance. But in economics, capital does not mean money. Capital means machinery or plant, which is 
a way of saying factory space or workspace, for example. So capital has to be thought about as a form of machinery or plant. And that's then used in conjunction with labour and the raw materials to churn out products. And you can think about things like sewing machines. That's a form of capital that humans use to put cotton through in order to create a product called a shirt or something like that. And then the reward for capital is, again, rent, because you could rent that out. You could lease it out as well, so you get lease money from that. And also, if you're an owner of capital, your reward might be a share of the profits of a business if you have struck that deal with, for example, a business owner. So the final category of factory production is enterprise. And this incorporates business ideas, so inventions, innovations, ideas to generate new businesses and stuff like that, and also the entrepreneurs that have those ideas, so people like Richard Branson, Alan Sugar, and so on and so on. So that's what enterprises, and they obviously work, or organise rather, the other three factors of production in order to create the business and create the product at the end of it. So the reward for that, for being an ent entrepreneur or being enterprising, is profit. The primary reward, there will be secondary rewards like satisfaction and status and so forth, but in economics we're concerned a bit about the primary reward, so that's going to be profit here. So they're the factors of production. They work in coordination with each other to produce goods and services in economics. And don't forget that pretty much all of the factors of production are scarce. And that's what we looked at last time. So another type of resource in economics is to classify them as renewables and non-renewables. So renewable resources then are ones that don't run out or don't deplete once used. So, for example, water is classed as a renewable resource because it can be reused, it can be cleaned and doesn't necessarily deplete. And you've got things like renewable energies, like solar, wind, geothermal, those type of things would count as what are renewable resources. So you might have bad weather in the UK, but in general, the sun isn't a resource that's going to run out for the planet and therefore counts as a renewable resource. There has to be a distinction made, though, because some types of renewable resources are only renewable if they are sustainably managed. OK, and we're going to call these sustainable resources. So things like fish and agricultural goods and forests therefore wood technically count as renewable because they can be replenished you know you can fish obviously breed and have fish eggs and therefore smaller baby fish and forests can obviously regrow over time and so forth but they aren't classed as renewable if they're not sustainably managed because for example you've all probably heard about animals that have gone extinct in the world types of plants that have gone extinct and that's through overuse by humans. So sustainable management of these types of resources will allow them to be classed as renewable. However, unsustainable management of them will therefore make them extinct and therefore deplete them forever. So non-renewable resources then are ones that are limited in their supply and that will run out or deplete with use over time. So things like wood and fish we've talked about, I've put in brackets down here on in this box on the video, they could be classed as non-renewable if they're unsustainably managed and run out. But things like oil, coal, gas, copper, the standard non-renewable resources that if we keep using them, and there's lots of evidence that this is happening in the world nowadays, if we keep using them at the rate we are, they will eventually run out. Now, technically, they do take millions of years to replenish. And therefore, in that sense, they're not non-renewable and could be argued to be renewable but given the pace of human consumption and the huge amount of time it takes for them to replenish they are essentially non-renewable resources we of course are in uh, are studying economics and looking at things within a reasonable human time scale rather than you know, over the course of millions of years so from that perspective they are non-renewables okay so our final thing that we need to look at in this video are economic goods and free goods. So economic goods are pretty much everything we've already talked about, things like gold and copper, wheat, cars, apples, all that sorts of, th sorts of things. Things that are scarce, basically. And in economics, we say that economic goods have got an opportunity cost. 
and we're going to look at that in the next video but very briefly an opportunity cost means that you have to give up something in order to do something else so for example if you had one piece of tin in the world and you wanted to make a roof out of it but the next option for example was to put it into wiring for electric then if you did one and not the other you've given up the other and that's what opportunity cost is but we'll say more about that in the next video so economic goods as the name kind of suggests it's got the word economic in it are looking at goods that are scarce and that we have to make choices about free goods on the other hand are the exact opposite of economic goods and they're not scarce don't just think they're free as in you don't have to pay for them it's just the fact that they're not scarce and that they're abundant and that by using them you don't really have to give up anything in order to do so so there's no opportunity cost in their use so examples of free goods are things like air and seawater there aren't very many others so that's the distinction between economic goods and free goods in the next video we're going to look at more opportunity cost and choice and then this will explain to you how economic goods operate and looks a bit more about really what the subject of economics is. So if you remember back to video one, we started by just saying economics is a system of management, managing resources. We've now built on that. We know what resources are, factors of production are, what economic goods are, and that they're all scarce. And now we're going to look at how opportunity cost plays a role in showing all of this. So thank you very much for watching. Please click subscribe at the bottom and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.